This is Lord Henry Mystic of Mystic Manor, and you're listening to the Disney Parks Podcast. Oh, Albert, Albert, stop that. No, 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 not the music box. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Parkhopper John from WDWParkhoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast. My name is Park Hopper John. I come to you from WW Park Hoppers. Joining me, as always, is my co-hostess with the mostess, Mr. Tony Casanova from Disney by the Numbers. What's up, brother? Very well, very well, very well. Hey, you know, I had this uh, revelation this weekend. There was a lot of stuff opening and starting up this summer at Walt Disney World in Florida. There was a lot of things coming online. Uh, so if you're heading down here, you better check your little Excel worksheet of the uh, attractions you want to hit because uh, it is uh, all lit up with new things, my friends. And I will tell you this, too. As crazy as this is and as crazy as it sounds, we were in the studios on Saturday. And I'm going to say this. It was like a ghost town. It was so light in the crowds. Were tumbleweeds swinging by? That we actually got a fast pass for Toy Story Mania while standing in front of Toy Story Mania. Get out. That's I kid you not. We went on Toy Story Mania, and the wait was only 40 minutes. Wow. That's crazy. Either everybody's over that Frozen attraction, which is broken down, or... They're just not going to uh, the studios because they feel there's too much construction there. So if you're coming uh, I, and you're not looking for a crowd, go to the studios. That's my recommendation right now. Yeah, it's good, good stuff. Well, you know, they, they did say that, you know, this is the awakened summer at Walt right. Disney World. So I guess that makes total sense with everything that they're opening over there. So, yeah, it's an exciting time. I can't remember a time in recent history outside of maybe – some of the new fancy land stuff and there was this right. much actually happening. Yeah. You know, and then you've got, then you realize you have half a park under construction. Right. You know? Right. So it's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah it's, it's good crazy. stuff. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of stuff. Right. I don't think any other park has this much stuff opening this summer. Yeah. For us. No. So good things. Hey, um, uh, I don't, I don't see it. I'm looking through, I don't see it in the news. I saw a news report today. Mm-hmm. Have you seen some of the images coming back from uh, Shanghai Disney on what the crowds are doing to the parks? No. It's unbelievable. They actually have to put out a, a pamphlet on park etiquette. Like things like uh, don't trample on the foliage, uh, don't defecate in the walkways, uh, pick up your own trash, those kind of things. Uh, because the crowd sizes have been so huge. I think the number has been 4,500 to one, 45 people to one bathroom. Wow. So there were Americans watching that were just blown away by uh, watching people let their kids just, you know, drop a deuce right in the middle of the, you know, right where the trees are. And I actually had a chance to talk to a couple that had just gotten back from China and spent a day at Shanghai Disneyland. Right. And they said that it's amazing um, that the park area, the one area that's just a park, yeah. is, is very... The garden, gardens of imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, they have areas where you could actually do physical fitness kind of things. Yeah. And they said that the queue lines that we have here in America 
because we understand the concept of a queue line and right. we're polite. Yeah. You know, we stay in the queue, we go back and forth and zigzag it. They had to redesign and reconfigure the queue line so that you didn't know where the queue was going and what it was doing because people were jumping the queues constantly um, because they're so used to trying to fight and scratch for every little thing that they get that, yeah. that people were just jumping into the queue line and just jumping all over. And that's something else they had to put in the pamphlets. So, you know, this couple said that Shanghai Disney is, is amazing, mm-hmm. um, but it's, it's really the people that are making it kind of, you know, not – uh, a fun experience. I'm not talking about China as a whole. So if you're listening, right. China, <laughs> I love your, your food, but you know, you're kind of abusing the park over there. So, uh, I went to what is now been dubbed, uh, Shanghai light <laughs> over the China pavilion went over there, uh, uh, Sunday when we were over there trying to get on frozen. And, um, I saw Shanghai light, so they got rid of everything uh, in the pavilion and put up all the Shanghai uh, things. Really? Including the terracotta? Yeah, all the terracotta things are all, everything, all the, all the display windows, all the terracotta things are all gone. It's wow. Uh, uh, Shanghai light. And um, they, they have some costume stuff, you know, what the costumes look like. They have some you know, concept thing from each of the lands. Um it, it, the one thing that was weird and just, I was like, what? So, you know, back in the day, they made that uh, awesome model of, like, Fantasyland, you know, that was in One Man's Dream, that big, huge thing. It was yeah. all, you know, to scale-ish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they even did it for uh, the stuff for um, Disney Springs. They made a whole big model. Right. They had the, the whole middle of the room was this big thing, and it was a flat picture. It was nothing raised up. There was no model. It was just a flat picture that they blew up and stuck on a piece of wood and, and slapped it in the middle of this room. I was like, what? 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 I, I'm thinking, well, maybe that is still being used by Imagineering. Maybe it's over still in, in Shanghai. You know, maybe they're still using that, you know, to scale model to figure things out or whatever. So maybe it'll come here. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Uh, don't they still have that model at One Man's Dream at Hollywood Studios? Or is that gone bye-bye yet? Uh, I think that m- it might be there. It might still be there. I don't know. They keep moving things around in there. Um, that might still be in there. But that's what then they should move over there and put, you know, in the middle of this room, not this flat picture. It, it's almost like a, 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 they took a map of the park, blew it up, supersized it, and then stuck it on this. We already have that, Disney. It's called Google Earth. Exactly. It's exact, Google Earth would look better than this thing. Wow. Yeah, you have to go see it. Uh, I didn't really even take any pictures of it because I just thought it was weird. That's crazy. Um, yeah. So that that was uh that was interesting. And I like yeah. the way people are calling it Shanghai Light. <laughs> Shanghai Light. Half the uh half the half the interest and none of the air miles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's great. Well that that uh we're gonna catch up on what Tony did this weekend. I didn't do any Disney this weekend other than I celebrated Stitch's six two six day oh, yeah. on Sunday. I was canceled so, about that. We're going to, uh, yeah, I didn't do very much. I shared a couple of things on Facebook. I didn't even wear blue. I'm just, I'm a really pathetic Stitch fan. Uh, I keep waiting for the Disney by the Number T-shirt club Stitch shirt to come out, and then I'm going to order like a dozen, you know. So, anyway, you know who to bother. <laughs> I've been, I bother all the time. So that's, that's kind of, we're going to talk about uh, a lot of things. We're going to do a special show again this week. We're going to do an entertainment show. Yes, we we're are. We're going to talk about uh, the food and wine festival preview that Tony got to attend with our good friend, Kristen from, uh, dining at Disney, right? Dining at yep. Disney. Dining at Disney. At least you messed it up this time and not me. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> There's always that moment of hesitation of, okay, cause we're friends with both her and agent. 
Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the new Frozen attraction that opened up. We're going to talk about uh, some other things that uh, Tony got to do this weekend. That's going to be a special show that's going to come out on Friday, so you're not going to want to miss that. And uh, we're going to uh, to go ahead and get into just the regular news show. If you're ready, Tony, are you ready? I'm ready. Is it that time to get into to the, the news? news? And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. Uh, as usual, the show is sponsored by uh, our friends over at Theme Park Concierge. And uh, you could do all sorts of great stuff. Uh, Ramon and his team over there uh, will take you all around the Disney parks as well as Universal, SeaWorld, now Disneyland, if you believe that, for just a very inexpensive fee for either half a day or full day. Ramon, one of his amazing team members, will take you around and treat you to a day at Disney or any of those great theme parks that you will not soon forget. Uh, the best thing you could do is email Ramon at Ramon at themeparkconcierges.com or call 407-257-9973. You can also visit them on Facebook at facebook.com slash Ramon VIP Concierges. And here's the thing. Tell them that the Disney Parks podcast sent you and you will save 10% on anything that you do with Theme Park Concierges, which is an incredible offer. Uh, we love those guys. We're very grateful to have them on board. Yep. And uh, if you want to know where to find us, we are going to be uh, doing a little meetup July 9th at 8.30 at the River Roost visit at uh, New Orleans Riverside. We are going to hang out with Yeehaw Bob uh, and uh, have a hooting and hollering good time. Uh, Bob is a very interactive, engaging uh, person. Uh, uh, if you've never seen him, you'll be quite surprised uh, at the entertainment. That is free here at uh, Walt Disney World. And then if that's not enough, on August 20th, we are going to Splitsville between uh, starting at 7 o'clock, uh, probably ending around 10-ish. Uh, if you'd like to do some bowling and dining and uh, you know, shoot some pool and just hang out with us and chit chat with fellow uh, Disney fans. Uh, come hang out with us August 20th at Splitsville, which is on the west side of Disney Springs. And then we have other things coming up that we'll let you know once we get them all figured out. But we have some good stuff coming up. Yep. And I already mentioned that I'm, I'm uh, repping the uh, Disney by the Numbers T-shirt club T-shirts. Uh, you can now join the T-shirt club for a long time. It's just a private group. Now we've opened it up to the public. So what you could do is you can follow the link over at DisneyParksPodcast.com. And that'll get you to a page where you can sign up. And then what happens is every month you get an email or you get a notification on Facebook saying, hey, here's the new shirt. You have the opportunity to buy it or as many as you want but you're not obligated to purchase any of the shirts. And I can't believe the shirts are still an economical $13 per shirt. Now, yeah. They do have plus sizes. I'm a big dude. I like the plus sizes. They're only like 2 or $3 more for the plus sizes. Still an incredible value. You can buy uh, T-shirts for the entire family and spend half the amount of money that you would uh, at the Disney theme parks. Now, I know you're probably going to want to buy them at the theme parks too, but these are custom shirts. You're not going to find these anywhere else. But – the Disney by the Numbers T-shirt club. So uh, visit us over at Disney Parks Podcast. Click the link for the T-shirt club. Find us over on Facebook and uh, join the club today. Sounds great. So you want to tell them where we're at the podcast? Okay, so we're going. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Disney has some frozen news. I'm so excited. Every it wouldn't be a show. It wouldn't be a show uh, for the Disney Parks podcast if Disney wasn't involved. So Disney expands the Frozen franchise with a brand new collection of books, animated shorts, and digital extensions. Uh, Walt Disney Animation Studios uh, has this little movie called Frozen that you might have heard of. Uh, they have launched a worldwide phenomenon back in 2013. Yes, yes. Can you remember a day when we didn't talk about Frozen every week? Yes. Uh, it became the highest grossing animated feature ever with more than $1.27 billion in global box office, which I think Finding Dory is about to crush. Yeah, I think uh, so. 
So to build on the beloved tale, Disney's announced Frozen Northern Lights, which is an original story from the Kingdom of Arendelle, spanning a collection of books, animated shorts from the Lego group, and new dis- digital extensions. I don't know why I can't say that word. Uh, beginning in July, Frozen fans can follow Anna, Elsa, Olaf, Kristoff, and Sven in an epic adventure to restore the glimmer of the Northern Lights. The story titled Disney Frozen Northern Lights Journey to the Lights Go to the light, my <laughs> friends and friends. Go the, to the light. When the frozen awakens. Um, wow, well, we'll have to talk about that in a second. Published by Random House will be introduced as a deluxe novelization of the July, uh, in July ahead of an extended collection of books featuring the familiar characters fans know and love, as well as a brand new protagonist named Little Rock. Wow. In addition... The storyline will be reimagined by the Lego group with four new animated shorts and a full uh, compilation airing on the Disney Channel this fall. The shorts will bring the unique brand of stylized animation and witty Lego humor to the world of Frozen with the voice talent from the movie reprising their roles. Those people are set for life. Yeah, yeah, they'll be doing those characters uh, forever. But, you know, it could be that at some point they may start using some you know people that can voice match right you know to do some of these uh and i think that's sometimes what they do in the games and things like that is they'll use a, a voice match person somebody like Kat Crescent uh yeah. would uh do something like that cuz she does yeah. um Jessie in uh, some of the games she does uh she does Jessie she does a couple of different characters yeah. she does yeah. voice match before. she's lost um time. If I could take it aside, Disney, we got to work on these titles, man. Yeah. You know, uh, what did you guys call it? Disney Frozen Northern Lights Journey to the Lights. Yeah. If you are a comic book person or a Star Wars fan, you know that there's a uh, Star Wars Journey to the Force Awakens line of Marvel books. And I'm just like, dude, same guy sitting there going for the first time in forever. I'm shocked that this story didn't start off with that. Yeah, well, <laughs> apparently that person was uh, on vacation this week. <laughs> yeah, he snuck one by him. He probably came back from vacation. And he was like, what? What? Yeah. what? We have a perfectly good starting line. Yeah. <laughs> Keep using it. Hey, John, have you ever been in the park and run out of battery for your phone? Oh, my God. I can't even tell you how many times I've run out of battery for my phone. All right. Well, Disney's going to help you with that. Uh, starting July 1st, you can now purchase something called a fuel rod. <laughs> and is this thing, story really about batteries? And the things you can do with your fuel rod are charge your phone. <laughs> so you will go to a select kiosk in Walt Disney World. And I'm going to run down the places that you can get it. And you'll buy your fuel rod, and it will be $30. It'll be yours to keep, and you will get a portable charging battery, a 6-inch USB Type-A to micro USB cable for most Androids. You'll get one Apple 30-pin connector to USB and one Apple Lightning uh, to USB. Now, this is not a rental. It is a purchase. Now, you're saying to yourself, Tony, I already have my own little charging device, but here's the kicker, my friends. Once you purchase this and you use it and it's now dead from charging your battery, you go back to any one of those kiosks and they will swap out the battery and give you a new one that's fully charged. Get out. I kid you not. So you know they're going to have to come up with like – Covers and stuff that you can slip your battery. I back am sure they'll come up with all of those things, <laughs> little, my friend. Little pocket thing and yes. little put it on your wrist. Oh, it's yes. gonna be great. Yeah. So let me tell you where to get this. Uh, starting July first, uh, at the Magic Kingdom, you can get it in the Tomorrowland Light and Power Company. Duh, great place to sell it. Uh, Big Top Souvenirs, Pecos Bills, kind of weird. Curtain Call Collectibles. Over in Epcot, you can only get it at Disney Traders. The studios, you can only get it at Celebrity 5 and 10. And Disney Animal Kingdom, you can only get it in the Island Mercantile. 
over at Disney Springs, you could get it at the Marketplace, Disney Photo Imaging, Disney Quest, ESPN, uh, while the World of Sports, you can get it over at the ESPN Clubhouse Shop. So I think that's kind of uh, an interesting idea. I am sure that lots of people go to guest relations. And say, my phone is dead and I got to make a call. I can't do my fast passes. I am sure they get a lot of that. And, you know, they will charge your phone if you give them the cable. Uh, but I think this will alleviate that. I mean, for 30 bucks, all you have to do is really t- is remember to bring this to the park with you every day, you know, and yeah. then you're done. You know, that, that, that's the only real trick. Yeah, that's a pretty good solution. And thirty bucks gets you, you know, all day charging capability. Yeah. So you yeah. can go back. I, I wonder if there's a limit. Like how many times? I don't think there is. They didn't mention one. That'd be amazing. Yeah. And I wonder how, you know, like, uh, like I have a Mophie case for my iPhone, and it's a Mophie eighty, so it it charges my my phone to eighty yeah. percent. I wonder how much this this charges you. Uh, charges your phone back. Yeah, it's seven. not very big. It, it's like a, what they call one of those lipstick chargers. Right. You right. know, it's, it's round. It's you know, it's a little tube. Um, I don't think you you could probably get one charge, and then you'll probably have to go back and get another or something like that. Um, you know, but hey, uh, you know, there I I because I, I see this all the time. There's people you, trying to use outlets all over the place in the park. You know, they're sitting all over the place trying to charge their phones. And uh, I think that's uh, becoming a a concern for them. You know, people are sitting in places they shouldn't be. They're using outlets that they shouldn't be. Uh, so I think they're trying to find a solution to it. You know? Right. I agree totally. It's a, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Uh, there's an initial investment, but, you know, that yeah. – I mean, the downside is, is you know – if a thousand people buy them and 500 people take them home and never bring them back, then you're having to constantly purchase them. But I'm sure the price point is so low. You can yeah. probably make this back just, yeah. you know, 30 bucks per batteries. Yeah. Pretty and, and I'm assuming that you can recharge it. Uh, and I, I think they did mention that, that you can re if you can't uh, swap it out, you can recharge it. Like if you bring it back to your room, obviously at night, you can recharge your, fuel rod back in your room and then bring it to the park and then if it runs dead and you don't want to go you know uh find an outlet which you really shouldn't just go and get a new battery get it swapped out and then really you're getting essentially a new rechargeable battery you know every time you go to the park you know even right. if that thing wears out that's not your problem anymore you're giving it back to disney right uh so it's i think brilliant. it's a great idea i think it's a great idea great idea yep Hey, uh, John, if you would like, you know, you can jazz up that ugly little magic band of yours. That gray, ugly, drab little magic band. I know. I know. You jazz it up. Uh, and you can get yourself a magic your band. Go to magicyourband.com where they have hundreds and hundreds of designs and fashions and colors and styles and textures and everything and then if you don't like anything they've done upload your own photo and then you can customize the way it looks you can even put your name on it your graduation day your birthday your anniversary whatever it is do all that so if you want to go check them out go to the disney parks podcast click on the link to magic your band use the coupon code disney parks podcast to check out all one word to get 10% off your next order. So go check them out at magicyourband.com. Well, that time has finally come, everybody. Disney Vacation Club has run out of deluxe resorts to expand their ever-growing market of vacation properties. And so they've made the announcement that DVC, Disney Vacation Club, is going to build their first ever moderate resort villa. And they've picked the location of Disney's Caribbean Beach. Or is it Caribbean Beach? It's Pirates of the Caribbean, but it's the Caribbean. Caribbean I think it's Caribbean. I do too. I would have said Caribbean. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, So it looks like they're going to be turning their attention now to moderate resorts, uh, which, in fact, is pretty fitting with Disney World's first moderate resort being the uh, Caribbean Beach Club. 
that's where they're going to start their DVC properties. Uh, the proposed new location at uh, the beach resort would be at the southern edge of the resort, wedged between the existing hotel and Disney's Pop Century Resort along Victory Way. Uh, it's unclear when construction may begin on the proposed budget on the proposed project, uh, and it's still pending its final approval at the time of this posting. Uh, but it is expected to be the next DVC resort construction after the new expansion finishes over at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. Now, as a, a DVC owner, yeah, or you know, I guess I could ask myself this as a as a prospective, you know, person to buy into this. How does this make you feel? I mean, are you excited by this? Uh, it, it does. It doesn't bother me either way. And here's the other thing too to note about this is they're not going to dumb down the DVC amenities to make it fit within a moderate resort. You're still going to have all your normal DVC amenities uh, that you would normally have. They're not going to, you know, make the room smaller. You know, take out kitchenettes or any of those kind of things. They're not. Yeah, um, I would think it would just be the location is is going to correct. Be, correct. Yeah. And here's the other thing, too, that I was thinking about. Why do they have to try and um, put this where a, 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 where a resort already exists? Why not just big a bi- make a big DVC resort somewhere else? Just You have lots of property. Just pick a place and, and make a big uh, new DVC resort. Infrastructure. If you're, if you're tapping you into it. You can make that, too. <laughs> yeah, but if you're tapping into a pre-existing property, you know, you don't have to do some of those crazy things like, you know, the deep infrastructure you have to when you're building a brand new resort somewhere else on property. You have to run sewer lines and roads and zoning permits. It's so much easier to just adapt a, a, a pre-existing property. Uh, I'm sure it would take less time, but um, the question I, you know, ask myself is, you know, how many more, you know, the piece of property that they're looking at is not very big. I mean, how many, you know, rooms are they going to put there? Um, you know, I don't think they're going to get a, a huge bang for their dollar. I, I, I don't know how they're going to build it, but I'm not going to worry about that until we start seeing sure. about they're building it at the uh, yeah. <laughs> the Art of Anime or the Art of Music or the, uh, what is it, the Value Resorts. The, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Art of Animation. <laughs> No, 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 I don't even know what the value is. I can't remember what the value is. All-Star Music? All-Star Music. Hey, we're building our first DVC resort at All-Star Music. That'd be great. <laughs> I I mean, they could do that there. And yeah. yeah, that would be funny. You get, like, the high-end DVC hotel property, and then you come over to the <laughs> value resort property. That'd be tragic. You know, they could put maybe a, a, a one or two buildings um, that are maybe only studios. True, yeah. you know, rather than a grand villa, uh, just put a whole building of studios, and maybe yeah. that would work. You know, yeah, put a grand villa on the top layer, and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, and maybe yeah. that. Well, you know, we'll see. Uh, it's very exciting. I'm, I'm thinking it's great. It's a good time to be uh, buying into DVC. I guess you know, you got yeah. some really cool places you can go to. Yeah. And hey, I, go ahead. I did, I did read recently that the. Poly is now forty percent sold. So, only forty percent. Only forty percent, my friend. Wow, still- it takes a long time to uh, sucker people into dropping that much cash for a yeah vacation club. <laughs> yes. Well, that's too early for an alligator joke, so I'm going to let that one go. <clears throat> hey, if you love the Disney Parks podcast as much as we do, and you uh, appreciate the work that Tony and I put into these shows each week, and with all the things that we do. Uh, and you want to help support the show by uh, making sure that we can pay for hosting and making sure that we can do some really cool things. We've got some really amazing plans uh, for some meetups, and that's going to require us to have a little bit of outlay of some funds. And so if you want to help support us in that way, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com, Disney Parks Podcast. And uh, you can uh, donate as little as oh, one to five dollars a month or as much a month as you would like to. And every bit of that goes towards making the show that much better. And we've got some people who have already signed up and there are some of our great Patreons. We want to say thank you uh, to David Maruka, Stacy Miller, Willie Walter and Eva Gibbs. So make sure you can follow the link over on DisneyParksPodcast.com, but you can go straight there at Patreon.com slash Disney Parks Podcast. <laughs> 
And again, we want to say thank you for all your support and uh, helping make the Disney Parks podcast as awesome as we think that it is. Yeah. I should mention uh, we were up for a di- – uh, uh, we were up for a podcast award. Uh, we did not win, but want to say thank you to everybody that a nominated us and b voted for us. Uh, is you know we're just happy to get nominated half the time, and that just you know tells us that we're doing something right. So uh, thank you all for doing that, and thank you for taking the time to do it. Hey, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to make this crazy statement. Uh, Christmas is right around the corner. <laughs> it's wow. uh, like six months away. So Disney's already gearing up the uh, Christmas parties. Uh, I think we already spoke that you know they're doing some Halloween parties, and now they're announcing the uh, very special 2016 Holiday Wishes Dessert <laughs> Premium Package. <laughs> In 2016, guests will have the opportunity to experience the Holiday Wishes Dessert <laughs> Premium Package during Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. On select nights, November 7th uh, through December 22nd, the party will feature a holiday-themed cupcakes and desserts such as dipped strawberries, chocolate mousses, ice cream, or is that mousse eye, uh, cheeses, (laughs) and fresh fruits. You can toast the season with sparkling cider, signature lemonade, specialty Christmas drinks, uh, hot chocolate, coffee, and tea. Guests will also get a reserved viewing area for the Mickey's Once Upon a Time Christmas Time Parade on Main Street and Holiday Wishes Celebrate the Season Fireworks. Packages are available on November 7th, 8th, 10th, 11th, 13th, 15th, 18th, 27th, 29th, and December 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 11, 13, 15, 16, 18, and 22. Cost is a mere $79 for adults, and that's above and beyond your regular ticket, my kids. $49 for the kiddies, three to nine, taxes not included. Book online or please call 407-939-3463. A ticket to the party is also required. So this is not just pay the $79 and you get to go to the party. This is $79 for the party and $79 for the party. So, yay. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> we were, I was talking to some friends of mine in uh, in Atlanta, Preston and, and Don, and they were thinking about coming down, and they were talking about going to one of these parties, and they said, well, it's just kind of cost prohibitive for the party. And I was like, well, yeah, but if you think about it, if you're going to buy tickets, I don't think they're pass holders. If you're going to buy tickets to the Magic Kingdom anyway, you're getting into the park for, you know, about half the time for a third of the price. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. You know, uh, and they were kicking around the idea of doing one of the dessert parties. I was like, no, do not do that. That's crazy yeah. talk. Yeah. But yeah, um, it's it's nutty how these the parties are more expensive than the the price of the ticket. Yeah. Here's um, the thing: if you're uh, if you don't like crowds and you don't like you know the sea of humanity uh, that is thrust upon you. Uh, to try and see fireworks of the parade, then the seventy nine dollars is maybe something that you want to consider. Um, you know, <laughs> I know some people, myself included, I don't like to be standing waiting for the parade for two hours before it starts, and I don't like to be pushed and shoved around on the main street curb. So if you don't want all that, this may be something you may want to consider. I bet on some of these nights, it may be only. A handful of people that'll be in those reserved areas, you know. So, yeah, to consider if you have the money. Yeah, and that and there therein lies the the thing. If that's in your budget and that's mm-hmm. not a problem for you, yeah. seventy nine bucks plus another another sixty bucks to go see the show. Hey, right. knock stuff out and have a great time. It's your money. It's your vacation. Right. You should do whatever the heck you feel led by, whatever you want to be led by to do. And okay. for me and my house, it's still a little steep. Yeah. Yeah, but that's me. Right. So, who knows? Hey, uh, are you a fan of uh, Pete's Dragon, the uh, animated live action movie? I did like it. I did like it. Yeah. Are yeah. you excited about the new movie coming out, the fully I, live action with CGI? I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be interesting. You know, 
probably two years ago when we started talking about them doing this to every every animated film, I probably had some other comments like, "Why are you making an animated film live?" Right. Um, but I've been cautiously optimistic about what they've been doing, you know. And so far, they haven't destroyed anything too terribly bad. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I take I mean, it with a grain of salt and Alice. a little bit of caution. You mean other than Alice through the Looking Glass? Okay, that's a horrible movie. Told you. <laughs> that's a horrible movie. <laughs> so. Well, I was I was very curious as about <clears throat> I was very curious to why they chose Pete's Dragon. Mm. Um, I didn't know that it was it was really that iconic of a movie. Melissa, yeah. Maleficent made sense, you yeah. know. Uh, Cinderella made sense. Right. You know, Beauty and the Beast makes sense. Peach right. Dragon, that's kind of an odd call. But uh, beginning is July, it really about Pete and a dragon? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But beginning July first, guests at Disney's Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World and Disney California Adventure at Disneyland. Can check out a 10 minute preview of the upcoming Disney feature film, Pete's Dragon. The sneak peek at Hollywood Studios will be shown as the finale of the One Man's Dream attraction. And at California Adventure Sunset Showcase Theater, formerly Muppet Vision 3D, guests will uh, see the sneak peek in 3D with special in theater effects. Uh, Pete's Dragon stars Robert Redford, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Oaks Fegley. Um, that opens in theaters August 12th. 2016, which is a very important date for those of you who have blackout dates as a Florida annual pass holder for Disney. That's the <laughs> dates that we all get to go back into our happy place. I Here's the thing. I just find it weird that they have to put this 10-minute preview in the parks. What person on the planet doesn't have the internet, they can't see this preview all over the internet. It's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. It's on Twitter. It's all over the place. Why do you have to put it in the parks? Those kids have watched it probably 10 times on their phone before they even got to One Man's Dream. You know, just stop already, Disney. We don't need it in the parks anymore. We, we can find it on the internet. We know with, how to do that. With all the spaces they have, little nooks and crannies that they have, like where they used to have the Captain Jack experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with all the little mini theaters that they have around oh. that they're not utilizing. Yeah. I don't necessarily understand. Like the sounds. Dangerous. Um, sounds dangerous. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why they're using the one man's dream theater uh, when they have that movie with a tribute to Walt Disney, you know. Yeah, yeah. And... And maybe it's just because I'm a Walt fan. Maybe it's just because it's, it's the somewhere. reason they all have jobs. Correct. It's not called, you know, Disney World. It's yeah. called Bob Iger Walt, Dream. Yeah, it's Walt Disney World. And they call it that for a reason. Right. You know. So I really and that's just me being a nerd about it. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But you know, I understand. Let's get the word out about the movie. I'm not against them doing the preview thing. I sure. think it's great. Uh Sarah and I happen to be in Disneyland, the year that one of the Pirates of the uh, Caribbean movies came out. Oh gosh! And they had the little preview thing uh, in the in the little area where they used to have like the barbecue. They weren't doing the barbecue oh, yeah. over that season, and so they had like barbecue. Yeah, so they had like the big screen set up, and then they had mm -hmm. uh, you know towers and stuff. A bunch of pirates came out, and they were swinging back and forth, and they did a little song, and then they showed the preview. It was stunning. It was great. It made me very excited for the movie. I get the concept of why this is important. Yeah. What I don't get is why they keep pushing Walt out of the the finale of One Man's Dream. I don't yeah. understand that at all. I don't. I don't get it either. I yeah. get it either. I agree with you. There's a thousand five places they could do, and that shouldn't be one of them. Right. Hey, uh, last week we had a uh, contest, and the question was, "What is the number of the certificate?" On the elevator at the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. And, uh, John, did you know the answer to that? I did know the answer to this. All right. And the correct answer is 10259. And that is the year, well, it's actually the date, 10 
to 1959 that the Twilight Zone actually premiered on CBS. So that is the certificate number on the elevator. This week's content, and we have a winner. It's Kylie Pitts. Uh, Kylie, send us your uh, mailing address. Send that to the Disney Parks Podcast at gmail.com, and we will send you a little token in the mail. Uh, this week's question comes from the Magic Kingdom. And there are several ferry boats that go from the Ticket and Transportation Center to the Magic Kingdom. Send us the name of each of the boats and the color of that specific boat. So each boat has a name and it has a specific color. Okay. Right. So you're talking about the big the big, big boat. Like the Captain Mickey Mouse. The the big honking yeah. ferry boat. Not the little bing, bing, oh, oh, the the big, burr, burr. big big working one. The yeah. double decker. The double decker party boat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. That that big monster. Not the okay. little guys. And how many of those are there? I'm not gonna say. That's oh, for you to find out. No, and you no, can send us. No hints. No hints. You're a cool I will man. tell you this: there's more than one and less than a dozen. <laughs> you're you're about as helpful as a tick on a dog, buddy. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> hey, my best friends over at Pixar, John Lasseter, if you're listening, please call me. Uh, have a lot of movies coming out up and through. 2020 and uh we're just going to kind of recap some of the stuff they got going on uh like john said dory is out there and uh she is crushing it um it may be probably disney's biggest film for the year probably going to be pretty close it's going to be it's going to be an interesting race to see which of uh which disney film comes out on top this year but will it beat titanic I don't think it'll be Titanic. Okay. It'll get damn close, but it won't be Titanic. All right, so up first, we have Cars number three. Now, put number two out of your head. (laughs) Just kind of of think Cars one, and don't think that Cars two ever happened. Cars three is set to be released on June 16th, 2017. John Lasseter has said that this film, whacking back, to the emotional feel of Cars 1, and then discuss the relationship between Lightning McQueen and Doc Hudson. So, there you go. Go go with what you know, guys. Go with what you know. (laughs) Exactly. Don't don't try and make it something it shouldn't be. Coco is planned for November 22, 2017 release, and it's an original story about a Dia de los Muertos a Mexican holiday. Did I say that close, John? Close enough? Uh, yeah, you were pretty close. Dia okay. de los Muertos. It's Muertos. Uh, Day of the Dead. Day yeah. of the Dead. So viewers will meet Miguel, a 12-year-old boy who conjures up an extraordinary family reunion between the living and the dead on the Mexican holiday, celebrating the beloved deceased Coco. And it'll be directed by Lee York. Uh, and it'll be produced by Darla K. Anderson. Now, the one I've been waiting for since the last one happened is Toy Story 4. Uh, this will tell the story between Woody and Bo Peep. I'm going to hold judgment. I am going to trust the master, Lassiter, who is going to write and direct this, uh, that he will produce something that will not Break my heart. <laughs> but this will be in sto- inspired by John Lasseter's own marriage. Uh, the film is due out on June 15th, 2018, and it can't come a day too soon. And it will explore Bo Peep's backstory, and it will be written by, and I think this is kind of weird, Rashida Jones and Will McCormick. Yeah, it's going to tell the story of two, store, two toys who fell in love created their own empire and built a winery out in Sonoma uh, Valley. Yeah, California. yeah probably, probably. And then they started having their wines featured at Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival. <laughs> um, dear John, 
please don't, please, please, please do not disappoint us with Toy Story 4. You know, people are mocking you. Three is good. Why do four? Please do not ruin my complete 20 years of my life loving Toy Story. Now, this is where I get to say, I really don't want this movie to stink because I was I disappointed with a good dinosaur. But there's a little piece of ass in me that wants to see Tony go, oh, my God, what have they done? <laughs> I just I just want to see that for like five seconds. I don't want to crush him, but it's funny as hell to me for about five seconds. Listen, <clears throat> uh, somewhere around June 14th, 2018, uh, you may be, want to be listening to this podcast because either I'm going to be crying or I'm going to be doing a happy dance. One of the two. Uh, if you want to see me cry, then tune in. If you don't want to see me cry, uh, tune in. So either way, uh, you may want to be here. <laughs> yeah, tune in. Just be here. Yeah, just be here. All right. Uh, so it's been 15 years, and I can't believe that. 15 years. That's crazy. We've seen the incredible family in action. And this is planned for June 21st, 2019. Not much is known about this sequel yet, but Brad Bird will be back writing and directing. And uh, we know that Samuel Jackson will reprise his role as Frozone. And I will make this one little note. This is the only Pixar movie that was PG-13. And it was because of the animated violence that made that rating. Oh, yeah. They had flying razor bikes chasing yeah. after kids. Yes. They had, they had some bad stuff. Yeah. And, and not to mention the Mr. Incredible married Elastigirl. Yeah. And got busy. That line, <laughs> best line of the movie. That's probably the best line in any Pixar movie, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I love Brad Bird. I love the work that he's done yep. uh, outside of Pixar. Uh, his Mission Impossible, perfect. He knows how to do a good spy-type movie. The first Incredibles was was my yeah. favorite. So I'm very much looking forward to this bad boy. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, I do like the Incredibles, too. They're probably number two right after my Toy Story friends. I thought... Uh, I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I did like that spy stuff and all that kind of stuff. I did enjoy it. All right. Uh, then the last two animated films are not yet titled. We uh, don't know really anything about them. But they're due out in March 13, 2020, and then June 19, 2020. Um, and, and that's all we really know. You know, uh, the, these movie studios now put these dates, these markers, in the in the sand. So that other other studios don't kind of stomp on release dates. You know, they try to, you know, oh, I'm going to release something that they, you know, so that another studio making a film won't try and maybe compete with, uh, you know, something. You know, you don't, you know, Universal doesn't want to put out something good on the same day, you know, Pixar puts out Dory. You know, they try and stay, you know, away from each other. That's why I think the Pets thing is coming out, you know, a little bit later now. Uh, and Dory, you know, yeah. came out a couple of weeks ago. So yeah. they don't crush each other. And and listen, and the other reason too is you're not going to go to the, the 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 movies probably two weekends back to back or on the same weekend uh, to see two movies. You know, they're not. You know, a family of four can't go see Dory and Pets the same weekend. They'd be broke. Not legally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not without taking a mortgage out on their house. That is true. So, so that's good. That's cool. Very excited. Yep. Uh, hey, if you are a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean and you love to play the Pirates Adventure Treasures of the Seven Seas game in Adventureland, you mm-hmm. are in for an incredible treat because Fast Pass Pluses for Pirates of the Caribbean are now being awarded during the interactive Pirate Adventure game. Uh, so if you love to play that game in Adventureland, you're going to receive a Fast Pass Plus for Pirates of the Caribbean, once you complete three missions in the Pirates Adventure Treasure of the Seven Seas. So you can sign up for the interactive game in the Crow's Nest near the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. And when you complete each of the five missions, you will also be awarded Treasure Finder cards. So that's kind of nice. It's nice to get a little something for your time. Yeah. Uh, If you haven't, uh, try this game. It doesn't take... uh 
a long time. It's not, you know, Sorcerer of the, of the Magic Kingdom uh, type game. It's not, it's not very complicated, not very hard. Uh, you're given these different maps. They have a bunch of different maps. I think three, three or five of them. And uh, each map is really nice. So, you know, maybe ask for two of them because I think some of them make some great uh, little souvenirs uh, for the kids to take home. You know, they could do their own little Pirates Adventure home. Uh, another thing about this is our good friend uh, Mark Silverman uh, does some of the voices uh, for the things that you'll hear uh, during this. And I was at I was at Tower of Terror this weekend. I, I did a little video on my phone of the, you know, Mark doing Rod Serling and then sent it to him on Facebook. And, uh, you know, he thanked me. I thanked him and then he thanked me. So it was... Uh, no, thank you, Mr. No, Akimoto. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we should have Mark back on. Maybe he's doing something interesting and uh, maybe he could tell us about it. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Uh, I think we had spoken this uh, about this probably a couple months ago that Disneyland started doing this. Right, right. Yeah, Disneyland started it. Now we're getting it. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently the test was successful. So beginning on June 26th, guests visiting Walt Disney World will now be able to purchase a refillable souvenir popcorn bucket. The initial cost of the bucket is $10, and then refills thereafter will be a buck fifty. Uh, sources say the discounted refills are for the remainder of the day, but it's unclear yet on how they will monitor to this. How do they know you bought the bucket today? You know, do they stamp it? Do they mark it? You know. Is it a different bucket each day? We don't know. So uh, we'll have to figure that out and let you know. Uh, the refillable buckets are available at the four theme parks, the two water parks, Disney Springs, and ESPN uh, Sports. So that is property-wide, my friends. And those are the words you were looking for. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe they'll yeah. put, like, the little uh, RFID thing. In, in yeah, the like the, the, the cups. Yeah. cups. Yeah. yeah, I had to explain that this weekend. Uh, we did a 5k around the boardwalk and, uh, I was there with some people that, um, it was really weird. They work on Disney property, but they don't work for Disney. Oh, okay. And, uh, we went through into the bakery and, uh, this one person bought, uh, a, a soda pop and she's like pressing the button and it wasn't coming out. I said, you set your cup down. And she's like, what? I said, set your cup down. She's like, no, no, no. It's just stuck. I'm like, no, set your cup down. She set a cup down. She pressed the button. She's like, well, that's weird. And I said, no, there's an RFID chip in there that allows the soda to flow. And she's like, what is this? So I had to explain the whole history of why there's the RFID chip on the bottom of the soda pop cup. So that was kind of fun. Uh, and her reaction was my reaction. She was like, is this really an issue? Soda costs like a penny. I'm like, I know, right? So this is a fascinating story, especially when they say that refills are $1.50. So you know they're still making money on the refills. So let's say – the popcorn costs 50 cents. Just think about how much money they're making. What a killing. They're probably, probably less than 50 cents. Yeah. Killing they're making on, on popcorn. And let me tell you, that bucket does not cost $9. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it does not. That bucket costs probably about a nickel. Landed cost to the United States, my friends. That's right. That's right. Made in China, which is funny. Now, I wonder if all the stuff at Disney Shanghai is actually made in China. Or That's made, made here. We just sent it. Made in the USA. Yeah. Made in the USA. Yeah. <laughs> we just swap stuff. So they'll they'll make our stuff. stuff and send it here. We'll make their stuff and send it to them. That'd be funny as hell. We well, started you know, a little uh, sweatshops over in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> they don't pay people in money, they pay them in cheese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could be. Oh god. Cheese sticks. A cheese stick cheese for sticks. you today, cheese stick for you. They today. work double time on Sunday, but they do pipe in the uh the uh Green Bay game, so everybody yeah, can exactly. watch the game and work. All right. Hey. So, hey, there's a new Haunted Mansion theme picture book and CD coming this summer to Disney Parks. All right. Uh, Disney Parks Presents is a series of picture books with CDs and original artwork based on beloved Disney Park attractions and rides. This book is a fantastic way for readers to relive classic Disney attractions from the comfort of their own homes or to experience them for the first time in forever. Hey, uh, I want to make an observation. Sure. Why is it when uh, Disney wants to start something new or different or try something, they always start with the Haunted Mansion as the attraction? 
Oh, we have a new T-shirt. Let's start with the one to me. We have a new, you know, uh, premium, uh, you know, souvenir thing. Let's do it with the Haunted Mansion. It's always the Haunted Mansion. Because they're not stupid. <laughs> they're not going to. They're not going to start it with you know Stitch's greatest. The cake. teacups. <laughs> the teacups. Uh, hey, we've got this really. You know, it's a shaky idea. We want to try it out. Which ride do you want to try? Teacup. Uh, Pooh. <laughs> the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> How about up the wild? Mr. Just an ride. We closed that uh, years yeah. ago. Okay, uh, Potty Mansion. Let's go with that. Uh, plus, at some point, they're going to do a movie, another movie. Gareth Torm is still. Yeah, I know. Or still signed I'm up. Waiting. I'm waiting. So, uh, the Haunted Mansion is again the first Disney Parks attraction featured in the Disney Parks Present series. On the inside covers, readers will find a CD containing a uniquely created five-minute and 32-second musical tour through the attraction. The tracks include the classic Grim Grinning Ghost sung by Buddy Baker and Xavier Astencio, or X Atencio, uh, Atencio yeah. as he's known to his friends. Uh, that inspired the book. Illustrations for the 32-page book were created by James Gilliard, an artist from London, England. We need to get him on the show. Uh, future Disney Parks Presents books will feature attractions such as Pirates of the Caribbean and now the world-famous Jungle Cruise, each with its own unique art style. Look for Disney Parks Presents The Haunted Mansion in select merchandise locations this summer at Disney Parks or at other favorite retailers nationwide. Well, at least they're not keeping it just to the parks, right? I don't know. Why, if you could make money all over the world, you know, I wonder how much the book is, and I wonder if it's going to be cheaper on Amazon. Yeah, probably. Yes. I wonder if it's there now. Maybe. I, I, I they think they said the end of the summer, so July, August, I think was the time frame. Yeah, go take a look. I bet, I bet you could pre-order it. Yep. All right. So coming up, uh, it's right around the corner. Actually, next week is the Fourth of July. Uh, actually, this weekend, really, because uh, Monday is the Fourth of July. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in and around uh, the Walt Disney World. Uh, let's start over at the Magic Kingdom. The celebration begins with Disney's Celebrate America, a 4th of July concert in the sky starting July 3rd and July 4th at the Magic Kingdom. The 14-minute fireworks spectacular rockets into the sky over Cinderella Castle starting at 9 p.m. both nights. The fireworks are set to exciting music, musical score produced in a concert band style. The score was specifically created to stir a sense of pride in being America. Show producers say, while at the same time inviting guests from around the world to feel part of the celebration. Next up is the infamous Disney's Hollywood Studios. Where guests can enjoy the all new and may I add super spectacular Star Wars a Galactic Spectacular fireworks nightly. The show begins at a special time of nine thirty for the holiday weekend on July third and July fourth. The next generation of Star Wars themed fireworks, a Star Wars a Galactic Spectacular. Dazzles with new themed fireworks, lasers, special effects, video projections and iconic characters from scenes uh, from the complete saga all set to unforgettable score of the music i because, also re- because nothing says god bless america like star wars like a death star like a death star <laughs> like <Here it> co- <laughs> hey, <Here it> co- <laughs> happy happy 4th of july celebrating independence day <laughs> i am your father <laughs> I am the father of your country. How <gasps> George Washington. <sighs> uh, here's a couple of things uh, that I found out about these fireworks, uh, the Star Wars Galactic fireworks specifically. Uh, number one, uh, this show is really not even complete, even though they've added some of these great elements to this new thing that we've all been seeing and, and drooling over. Uh, we're still missing, uh, missing all the fire and lasers uh, and these giant uh, – 
lightsabers that are going to shoot into the sky uh, at the end of the show. We're still missing those elements. Uh, from what I hear, they've been working on this every night. They do the show, and then all the technicians stay, and they try to figure out uh, how to, I'm going to use my words, fire up the fire uh, so that they can make the show complete. So, they've you know, if, with Joe Rody. Joe Rody works every day on yeah. that. Yeah, Yeti. On the Yeti ride. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're right there with Joe. Uh, so if you've seen it and you were wowed, uh, you may have to go back and get rewowed because uh, it's not done. Uh, the other thing I know is they're not even shooting some of these fireworks off in the park. They've moved them outside the park near World Drive. Uh, they have these little portable firing stations uh, to give this kind of panoramic because there's a lot of construction and things going on. So uh, parts... I think uh, I've been told that sometimes at night, uh, like one lane of World Drive is shut down so that, you know, your car doesn't explode on World Drive. So you may want to pay attention to that. Uh, next up is Epcot. A guest visiting Epcot on July 4th only will have the opportunity to meet some of their favorite Disney characters dressed in patriotic attire throughout the afternoon at the American Adventure Pavilion. The Voices of Liberty, the eight-part a cappella group, will have a special performance uh, at American's Garden Theaters at 12.30, 1.45, and 3 p.m. They will also perform inside the American Adventure Rotunda, where it's air-conditioned, at 4.15 and 5. Guests will also have the opportunity to catch the Spirit of America Fife and Drum Corp. They will bring back. Thank you. Uh, they will be performing at 1.00. 215, 330, 4, and 445. And if that's not enough, the evening will end with this spectacular fireworks and laser show, which we call Illuminations, Reflections of Earth. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, which will light up the night sky at 10 p.m. with the heart pounding a grand finale and a salute to all things American. America. Yeah, whatever. Uh, this grand finale is something to, to really see uh, from inside the park. Because outside the park, all you hear is, it sounds like a machine gun of fireworks. Um, it's pretty spectacular. But here, here's my tip. If you are going to be here this weekend, try and catch, uh, this would be my thing. If, if it was going to be me, and this is what, what I may do is try and catch the studios on one of the nights, the third and the fourth, and then try and do the Magic Kingdom on the third or fourth. I seem to like the Magic Kingdom's version uh, a little bit better. I like the music a little bit better. Listen, you didn't hear this from me, but I'm going to tell you some places to see the fireworks. All right? One is the Grand uh, uh, Floridian over by Narcosis because they pipe in the music to Narcosis. So uh, maybe go have a drink at the bar and then um, hang out and watch the fireworks. Uh, the other place I'll tell you to go is the Polynesian. They also pipe in the music. Uh, they usually put the uh, water pageant uh, floats uh, and they'll do like the, the flags on the floats. And that is usually the speakers uh, for the firework. If you can do that. Uh, and then the studios is obviously the second place I'd go see it either on the third or the fourth. So, yeah, and, and let me let me give my two cents about uh, if you're going to go to Walt Disney World on the Fourth of July, I think one of the wisest things you could do is definitely go over to Epcot. Uh, first of all, they're bringing about they're bringing back the Spirit of America Five and Drum Corps. Yeah, yes. cannot believe those guys are taking out of the park. I know, unbelievable, Shame. weird decision. Shameful, shameful is the word that I would use. Uh, secondly. Um, Definitely try to pick up one of the two performances of um, the uh, Voices of Liberty inside the Rotunda. They don't do it every year. I have no insider information on whether they're doing it this year or not. But if you were lucky, you may be able to catch a performance of um, Battle Hymn of the Republic. I'm going to start Battlestar of the Galactica. Battle Hymn of the Republic, and they use uh, more members of Voices in the upstairs rotunda, they do an echo choir. If you've ever 
seeing the voices and you get those chills when they sing. If if they are doing Battle Hymn of the Republic and they're using the Echo Choir, it will absolutely uh, stop your heart. It's so incredibly thrilling just to hear those people sing. And uh, definitely want to catch that because those those guys really are some of the most talented people on property, hands down. Yeah, yeah, they are very good. Very good. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> speaking of the Star Wars Galactic Spectacular. Yes, sir. Uh, Disney has uh, officially reported that the dessert party for Star Wars The Galactic Spectacular Nighttime Show will officially be relocating to Star Wars Launch Bay starting in July 10th. I love this idea. I really love this idea. It's a brilliant idea. The nightly party will be moving from center stage area to the fan favorite Star Wars Info Hub. Guests will then be escorted to the outdoor VIP section for Star Wars Galactic Spectacular 15 minutes prior to the show. Now, you want to check in uh, right outside the launch bay, and uh, they'll get you all squared away, air-conditioned. <coughs> uh, this is most likely a result uh, of the dessert party taking up a, a fairly important amount of real estate uh, in the center stage area and the show being wildly popular. Shocker. Uh, free up. Uh, a decent amount of space, and you're going to allow guests to view the Disney's newest spectacular for the best seats in the house. Now, the dessert party uh, costs sixty nine dollars per adult, uh, ages ten and over, and thirty nine dollars for children, ages three to nine. Tax and gratuity are included. Theme park admission, of course, is required, and uh, you definitely want to make sure that you sign up for this because I think it's going to be really cool that you're going to be uh, inside the uh launch bay now the question is where they're going to put you you know i want to i want to know where they're going to put all these people i'm I, wondering if they're going to put them in the they're the going to have a little roped off uh, vip area right in front oh sweet from what okay, i so know it's yeah. not going to be air conditioning it's still going to be outside yeah yeah the fireworks are obviously no uh the dessert i think you'll eat uh i'm not sure if the desserts are inside if they're using the area you know when you go under the uh animation arch Right, is Disney Junior on one side and Little Mermaid down. I think they're going to have them in that courtyard, mm-hmm. and then they'll have a roped off area in front of uh, the Great Movie Ride, uh, in front of the stage, mm-hmm. um, where you'll then see the fireworks from. Uh, I love the fireworks. If you haven't seen them, I'm I'm telling you, go. You, you're going to have to go multiple times because, yeah. like I said, there are elements that they're still trying to fix and bring online. Yeah. So. Uh. Vince is in the chat room, and if if you ever catch us uh, Monday uh, when we record live, uh, definitely come to Disney Parks Podcast. You could watch us, A, record live, warts and all, and B, you can be part of the chat room, and you could do things like this. Ask a question, and we can answer it live on the air. Vince is asking the question of what desserts they usually serve. Uh, I've not been to the Star Wars uh, dessert party specifically, but... Yeah. I know that most of the dessert parties they have tons of like cupcakes and cookies and pastries, sweets, pastries, yeah. pastries. Uh, because it's outside. They may even have some uh, like Mickey heads on sticks. Mm-hmm. But I will say that I did one of the the breakfasts, the Star Wars breakfasts, uh, not breakfast, but, uh, Star Wars dinner, and they had all of the Star Wars themed desserts. So everything is probably going to be very um, Star Wars themed. You know, like Yoda. Shaped cookies, yeah, or sure. Darth Vader muffins, that kind of right. stuff. I mean, right. it's a lot of really cool stuff. Probably going to have blue milk, um, and then they'll have different dessert drinks and coffees and stuff like that. So yeah. um, that's kind of the assortment that you usually get, right? Is there anything yeah. else that I missed? Did I miss anything on that? I don't think they have liquor. I think they might have one or two specialty cocktails uh, for the dessert party, too. Right. But usually those are non-alcoholic. I don't remember there being alcohol in, in this, or the price would be more expensive. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <clears throat> what do I know? Good yeah. to Okay, kids. Uh, I think that puts a fork in our show. Uh, we are going to wrap it up. Uh, and as a, you know, you want to visit us, come visit us on Twitter at Disney Podcaster. You can visit us on the Facebooker at facebook.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast. And last but not least, come and visit our awesome website at Disney Parks Podcast, where you can find everything that we do and see and videos and blogs and notes and all the stuff that we talk about. 
is all on the website. You can link up to our magic bands and our theme park friends and everything like that. Uh, and if you want to send us something in the mail, if you'd like to uh, you know, send us uh, the answer to the trivia question or just send us a note in the mail and you know, we can talk about your uh, question on the show, send that to DisneyParksPodcast at gmail.com. And we will take all your questions and answer them on the show. So as we'd like to say around here, kids, thanks for listening and we'll see you in the parks. The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney Parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Like a boat out of the blue Fate steps in and sees you through Your dream.